Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I want to start off with a uh, Paul Water Fountain. So I reconsidered uh, not sending over a drilling unit to Jewel and I'm gonna send this one over. So there's a modified version of the Gilly Water Fountain which means that it can not only drill for water but it can also refuel itself by drilling for carbonite. Uh, it can't convert the water to fuel which is something that uh, we would need one of the larger vessels, the Rocky, not, uh, the, the Bullwinkle class vessels in order to do. Uh, but it can handle the whole uh, drilling part and get the water. So that is, that's a, that's an improvement over the initial plan where I would have sent this sort of drilling unit later on. And yeah, I decided to just take advantage of this situation and get it over there. Uh, I'll probably also send over a supply mission just for extra life support just in case. Yeah, Jewel is quite far off, and I don't like the idea of sending sending uh, Kerbals over there without extra supplies. So we're going to do that, and then move on to two other things I want to handle is the transfer of the Explorer X back to Kerbin. Uh, we won't get it all the way, obviously. We'll just uh, start out from EVE. And then after that, I'm going to try and aim for that asteroid, the Class D asteroid we have to wrangle and send out into... Uh, out of the solar system, out of the entire Kerbal system. That should be interesting. So yeah, that's the plan for today, but uh, let's just uh, get on with this. This is a, a, the standard Strider, so uh, no big surprises here. Oh, uh, no, this is actually a Strider light, sorry. Oh, better get my, uh, my uh, rockets in order. Yeah, Strider light, and we are going to launch this quickly and move right along with the rest of the business. Okay, here we go. SAS on, throttle up, and hopefully not too much suspense when it comes to whether this will make orbit or not, considering this is now a very well-tested system, but if anything should happen, I'll record and tell you all about it. But uh, here we go. Seems like our fairings are staging in the wrong place, though. Okay, looking good as we've passed the speed of sound here. Probably coming close to max Q as well. Thirty more seconds on the boosters. Okay, four more seconds. Alright, set. Boosters are away. Are they gonna collide? No, it looks like they're safely off. Alright. I'll just wait until we get to the proper abwapsis in order to drop the fairings. We've got enough Delta V, there's no point uh, taking any risks at this point by releasing the fairings early. Okay, well, we'll be pretty close to orbit by the time we hit the target apoapsis. wonder if I should... I'll just burn to 120. Because it looks like we're going to have a very short burn at the top in this case. Well, how about 110 or 111? Yeah. All right, uh, severing the fairings off. Okay. So we'll keep this stage attached and have it start out the burn for Jewel. All right, 121 by 110, and uh, we'll keep this over here. Uh, let me launch the life. Well, no, let me plot out the course for this. Okay, so we've got a plot out to Jewel in in eight minutes. It looks like I think that's enough time to get the other launch up, but I haven't actually built that other launch. I haven't put the life support supplies onto a payload, so maybe we should just take care of this first. Since I don't have that one ready, and you know, it's not like we're going to be too far off if we do this first. Uh, especially since our other launches, as you can see, are sort of in a row here on their way out still. Yep, not too bad on the timing. Okay, here we go. I don't know if I can do this 
dual transfer in one burn or whether we're gonna have to go around Kerbin. If I do have to go around Kerbin then we can do the other launch while this is making its way around. Okay, mainsail off and our little LVT-95 is a go. Okay, so we're on our way out on the single burn. We've got our solar panels facing the sun there. All is looking well with about 50 more seconds according to that estimated burn time, which is never entirely accurate. This is what it's looking like right now. Probably less than 50 seconds. Okay, here we go. Uh, the appearance of a dual encounter right there. Let me get rid of the maneuver node here and just oh wait things are going badly yep well or maybe oh no they're not going badly it's just that that was messing with me okay but I guess that'll be good enough let me plot out the mid course plane change and then we'll be set on this one and then we can work on the supply transfer okay that'll do nicely as an initial setup 238 meters per second for the mid course plane change gets us relatively within the plane of the system and a reasonable periapsis okay now on to the supply mission alright so here we are with the dual supply mission this is just a bunch of food water and oxygen probably about eight tons worth of that and then of course a transfer stage in this case I have opted to go with the LVN atomic rocket motor and so the nerve if you will alright it's got RCS it's got a very small little R procedural RCS tank there to make rendezvous and otherwise it's pretty streamlined a uh, little bit of aesthetics in using that but otherwise uh, very spare yep I think uh, that's basically a business like sort of thing let me pack that up there's one other change I've made to the rocket uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that I should be using these uh, conic fuselage fairings instead of the of these conic fairings. Now, I previously I don't think I used these because uh, I did want them to separate, but in this particular case, the fairings keep uh, wanting to collide with the launcher. So maybe uh, not the launcher, the booster here and uh, thereby negating our ability to recover it and so maybe it's a good idea to to just uh, go ahead and use these fuselage fairings instead we'll see how that works out I believe they just uh, come off with this decoupler hopefully okay well that's the idea let's get this launched okay here we go I don't know exactly how many days worth of food water and oxygen this is actually launching I just uh, basically filled it to capacity. I, I don't think I could have put another one of those food water and uh, life support tanks. Uh, so uh, this was as much as I thought this could carry. But uh, let's see now. And of course, reach the dual system safely. Okay, let's get rid of the curb alarm clock just to have a nice clear view. And launch. Probably I'm not going to air break these, these missions. I'm going to try other ways of slowing them around Jewel because they don't have very good heat shielding and we do have deadly re-entry. So possibly what I'm going to do is just use pr propulsive captures and then uh, use the moons to help us. We'll see. It'll depend on our orientation as we get there and whether we can arrange for a Tylo encounter for instance to slow us down. Okay, getting ready for a separation here. Let's see if this modification works. We are now just burning out the SRB. This this is actually the wrong way around. Let's get that here. Okay, set and engine light. Okay, the fairings remain attached as fuselage parts and we'll wait to get word on the recovery. Speaking of which, I should probably clean up that uh, notification area because we're using stage recovery and I need to know when things get recovered but let me uh, orient this properly because we're at a very high pitch right now
Okay, let's see about these notifications. Some red, some good. Okay, uh, actually this one... This one, uh, we already got that back. That was rather quick. I didn't think it touched the ground that quickly, but uh, they, they refunded us. This is the jewel supply. This is this, this one's booster. So that worked out fine. Okay. Uh, Paul Water Fountain Debris. And so we got that from the previous launch there. And another booster. There were two boosters there. This this was other debris that wasn't meant to be recovered. I, oh, no. Uh, this was a failed booster. Yeah, the Rock Max uh, 2477. So this was a, a start SL launch that we actually lost the booster on. That one was a successful recovery. That was from the previous episode. Okay, so all worked well. I forgot who it was who made that comment, but thank you. And uh, I look forward to many more such comments. Okay, we'll keep it to 100. Let's separate fairings. I think we got. I'm gonna let this stage re-enter, so I'm gonna keep it there. Let's uh, let's stage it off, and the LVN can take care of the rest. Okay, 102 by 96. Let me plot out the jewel transfer. Okay, so we've got a 1,995 meter per second transfer with the LVN. This could take some time. But I think we might be able to get away with doing it on a single burn. We'll see. Should be similar to, to the previous mission. Okay, here we go. And so supplementary supplies will be on their way to Jewel. And this will be good. Don't know exactly where we're going to put them just yet. Probably should make this arrive a little bit later than the other missions, but I won't be picky about that. Okay, we're quite a bit off from the node, so I'm just going to shut down here and I'm going to go around Kerbin once, replot, and then reignite. So, a second burn for this one, as it turns out. So, as this one makes its way around, you can see all of its brethren heading out there past the orbit of Minmus now five missions there. This one is lagging a bit behind. Last one for Jewel. And then after I get this burn done, I'll plot the mid-course plane change. We'll have another alarm in our very long stack of alarms here. And then we'll finally turn to the Explorer X, which has been waiting for such a long time. So let me take it off of a smart ASS here. Okay, let's get the mid-course plane change plotted out. Okay, so a 239 meter per second burn will get us this sort of pass at Joule. Uh, maybe, because it keeps blinking in and out depending on how I adjust these. It's, uh, it's that situation where it's got two possibilities and it's not entirely sure which one it likes. But uh, this seems to be a possibility, so we'll go with it. And so this, this little uh, supply mission is also on its way, and it's looking quite good right now. Yep, plenty of Delta V to get into orbit around Jewel and uh, maneuver to whatever mission. As long as it's not tight around some moon of Jewel, uh, uh, it probably shouldn't try to get into orbit around the moon of Jewel. We'd have to leave it in dual orbit, I think. We'll see. All right, so now on to the Explorer X. Hmm. It, uh, it would seem like the Explorer X is not entirely intact anymore. Uh, if you notice, the solar panels seem to be not quite in the right place. These are clipping into the procedural part there. Uh, the cones are also offset in a weird way. This is uh, probably a side effect of the upgrade between probably 0.25 and 0 0.90. So that's not all that great. Right now we've we've got these the the infant robotics struts are off. I think we're gonna have to decommission this entirely 
once we bring it back to Kerbin, we'll transfer the crew out and then decommission it. Uh, let's hope it holds out until then. It's a very expensive vehicle, obviously, but uh, the way it is right now with the infirm robotics parts looking like that and all the parts being bad and of course no probes on yeah I don't think this is going to be workable here I don't even really trust uh, firing the engines up but we've got so much Delta V here I guess we'll we'll try it out um, yep so let me make the plot from Eve back to Kerbin and then hopefully we can get Podzer and Chad bro back and then put them in a better vehicle upgraded with perhaps nuclear engines yeah wow even the I think even the LV now 9 is offset look look at that I wonder why it's weird okay anyway let me make the plot and then uh, we'll proceed okay so uh, we've got uh, initial burn and a mid course plane change pot plotted we've got uh, 645 meters per second on the first burn and uh, 317 on the second burn and that's well within the capabilities of this obviously the thing is on the Kerbin side we'll also have to use uh, propulsion to get into orbit we're not gonna air brake this thing so but we again should have plenty of fuel margin for that so it's not a big problem now let's see if this all works out the nodes in three days nine hours which is a little bit ahead of the the actual uh, time on the alarm, but our orbital period is six days, so it's not like we can wait for another orbit and then burn later. So this is the best we can do. And besides, it'll give us a little bit more time before we have to deal with that asteroid. Well, at least this thing can turn fine. It's got the nice uh, big reaction wheel up top there. But I am nervous about possible glitching. Hmm, passed it a little bit, but I guess let's get going. Alright, well at least the engines seem to be burning alright. Yep, looks remarkably stable all things considered. Okay, well we managed to get through this part, it looks like. I'll, uh, I'll just burn to what well, we have plotted. I don't think we should be too far off and we'll accept the mid-course plane change as plotted and we'll make adjustments there. Okay, within point one. Alright, so that'll be the mid-course adjustment and that'll get us to, well, some sort of Kerbin encounter. Doesn't actually say. Let me make a few changes to that one. Okay, that should be fine for now. Kerbin periapsis under 5,000 kilometers. Again, we're going to be using propulsion to get us into Kerbin orbit, so uh, loose pass isn't necessarily a bad thing, and we can adjust that on the mid-course plane change, it looks like. So let me add this alarm now. So that'll be another maneuver node. Okay, that's in nine... Oh, uh, that one... Oh, wow, we've got a lot of stuff in nine days. That's going to be a busy day, huh? All the jewel stuff have to get their mid-course plane changes, and so does this Explorer X. How does that happen? I wonder why the Explorer X happens to have its mid-course plane change on the same day, close to the same time as this bunch. Okay, anyway, now we've got a tough thing to deal with, this asteroid. Let me see what kind of tugs we have available to us to sort of grab that. Okay, well, we have a few of the space tugs. Uh, we've got this one in very loose Kerbin orbit, and this one's in a very tight Kerbin orbit. Uh, the tight one probably still has its transfer stage handy, so uh, I think I'll go to it. That's the second stage of the Maximus that I'm talking about. And so that, that would help it boost out to the proper place. And then we, also, we could uh, later on attach this space tug and this space tug to help out if necessary, but let's see what we can do with this one first. Indeed, this looks like the situation, and probably in this case I'm not gonna have this stage return. I'm gonna use all of its fuel to help us out, because we've got a Class D asteroid to to take care of, and uh, yeah, we'll just use all of its resources. So, 
as it looks here we've got 12,500 meters per second but I expect that the class D is going to be significantly more than 72 tons so we'll see how that works out anyway let us uh, let's try and make a plot of some kind Ah, uh, well problem number one is that it's going in the opposite direction descending node negative 150.3 degrees is that the negative 150 uh, anyway yeah it's coming around like this cl uh, relatively clockwise uh, which means that well it could be interesting to try and capture it outside of the curve and sphere influence but otherwise uh, we'd, we'd have to boost out and then we'd uh, we'd make the adjustment out there yeah uh, it wouldn't cost too much it wouldn't cost too much I don't think alright well let me try a few things okay I tried for the encounter outside of Kerbin SOI but it looks like it's a little bit too late for that if I want to keep this thing uh, well if I want to keep this thing with a lot of Delta V to spare and so yeah otherwise uh, it would take quite a lot to get out to it ahead of the SOI change and then after that I'm gonna have to uh, slow down to actually meet up with it so it's probably easier just to aim for this this node here this descending node point and uh, make all the adjustments there and then we'll capture it into Kerbin orbit before figuring out how to fling it out to to Joule really is where we want to fling it out to and then Joule will slingshot it out into uh, interstellar space so that's the plan let me uh, well let me time warp till that is that alarm rings and then we will plot for the encounter okay here we go but things seem to have changed somewhat in that it looks like we're going to encounter it only shortly before it wants to escape. It's not exactly the ideal situation for this. But, uh, just double checking on this. I suppose that's the situation we've got. Uh, maybe we'll want to send more than just the one space tug just in case. We don't want to lose this thing. Ah, oh, jeez. I think we got to miss this one. It's only staying in uh, the Kerbin system for a day and nine hours, but this transfer is gonna take four days. I guess I can overburn. We've we've got the fuel. That's not a problem. Now I think we're gonna have to give this asteroid a miss. Let me check the tracking station to see if there are any other likely candidates. Otherwise, I'll. I'll make an extra effort, but I don't see how this is going to work out. It looks like we're going to have to encounter them in interplanetary space instead of in Kerbin SOI, especially if they're coming in this this far away. Yeah, just barely in Kerbin SOI at all. Alright, let me check things out. Well, we do have this other Class D asteroid that's coming in closer in 24 days. Let me add that as a backup plan. Let me see, anything else? That's a C, that's a C, yeah. All the others I've checked, so that's the only other one. Uh, I have an idea, maybe let me try and see if I can plot for an encounter after it passes through Kerbin SOI. So once it's passed, maybe we can um, at least encounter it and then see what we can do from there. We do have a few space tugs to work with, and we can launch, well, we'll need to launch some more space tugs in order to actually push it over to Joule. But yeah, let me uh, let me take a look at that possibility. Okay, so the good news is that I can get a plot to encounter this D-class asteroid right there and at a separation of 328 kilometers if I start like right now. Um, the downside is, of course, that's after we pass through Kerbin SOI and it's gonna be a little bit harder to get it back in. And besides that, it's a very tough little encounter to make. Uh, let's see. All right, we'll try for this. I set my heart on this particular asteroid, and I'm gonna try and grab it. This is quite an angle, very particular sort of a burn that we have to do. You can see uh, 741 prograde, 500 normal, and negative 1,102 radial. 
very strange. Okay, well, uh, I'll start at node t minus one minute and try it out. Oh shoot, the the tar the the periapsis after this burn looks like it's going through the atmosphere. Not too sure that's how we're gonna end up, but I'll have to avoid that. That's gonna complicate matters, and there's a very touchy sort of tra uh, sort of trajectory that we've got lined up for us. Well, I'll do as much as I can, but I'm gonna stop it once the periapsis gets to 70 kilometers, and then we'll have to do the rest of the burn afterwards. Okay, that's all I can do right now. Let me head on over to periapsis and do the rest. It's not gonna be quite right. And that's a big deal when it comes to this particular trajectory. So, can this little tug meet that asteroid? Whoa, that's not a good sound. Oh, oh, overheating, overheating. That's what that sound was. Okay, there we go. Whew. Pretty close to having this thing blow up. I'm gonna get the solar panels on the payload out. I mean, the actual tug. Seems like we've gone past where we want to be, is that right? I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Uh, here, uh, there's no more node, go away. I think we've done too much. Okay, there we go, there we go. Uh, well, that's not quite right. I'm gonna have to replot and fine-tune that. Okay, now we've got 454.4 kilometers, and we have to do this burn in 1 minute and 20 seconds. So let's have smart ASS point there. 400 kilometers is still pretty far, but considering where we're trying to hit it, that's not unusual. Okay, so for this one I think we'll have an SOI change alarm. Oh, we got to 344, 345-ish. Uh, SOI change alarm and then we can maybe do a few more things before it actually hits that. Well, no. That's in T-1 day, 1 hour. It says we're escaping in 1 day and 3 hours. So actually this encounter, it says, actually happens uh, right there. Uh, go figure. <laughs> if it says so, okay, so somewhere right there is actually where the encounter happens. That's very interesting. I'm going to add a maneuver here. Uh, let, let me add a maneuver here. But I'm gonna take care, I, I don't know what this maneuver is gonna be, I'm gonna take care of that in the next episode, because I've done quite a lot of fiddling and it's taken quite a lot of time. So, yeah, we'll start off with this whole asteroid thing in the next episode, since that's one day and a few hours, and uh, the next thing we have to do is in four days. So, clearly this asteroid is first order of business. It looks like we're actually trying to hit it in, in Kerbin SOI. We're going to have a lot of velocity to kill off in order to rendezvous with it. It's going to be complicated. But, uh, yeah, we'll try that out and see how it works. First time trying something quite like this with... Uh, with so much excess velocity. But yep, yeah, tune in next time to see how that goes, and then our mid course plane changes. I'll try and take care of those as quickly as possible, and then uh, we'll proceed down the list, as it were. Okay, not, not any new launches for a while, unless I decide to launch the thing that's going to eject this out of the solar system, or the Kerbal system. Right, so uh, other than that, all of our missions are underway. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.